which is on YouTube. Um, we have some announcements. want to remind you of our regular services every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Amen. Every Sunday evening at 6. Also every Wednesday at 7. We have our midweek Bible study. Amen. We're having a good time. Uh, so we want to encourage you to be a part of that. On Sunday evenings, we're going through the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, tonight we're continuing on uh, the book of Acts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, also, amen, we're going to have Pastor Rigo Lopez from Glendale, Arizona. Amen. He'll be here on February the 7th. It's a Sunday for both services for Sunday morning uh, at 10 on February 7th and also in the evening at, at uh, 6 p.m. I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Amen. Uh, he's, a good, he's a good brother, good pastor. Amen. So I want to encourage you to come and join us. Uh, join us online, join us in person, amen, uh, be a part of that, support it, allow God to speak to you, amen, uh, he is pioneering, and uh, and when you pioneer, amen, you go through some battles, amen, so you know what, it would be a good time to, to get to get a piece of that anointing, amen, from those battles, amen, uh, pioneering is a, is a special thing that not everybody does, not all that can do it, not all are called to it, amen. God has really poured out his spirit, amen. That's what we're doing here. We pioneer. So you know what? Uh, I want to encourage you to be a part of that, February the 7th, amen, for both morning and evening service, amen. Uh, these are all the announcements, and uh, we're going to we're gonna lift up an offering, amen. So let's worship God as worship comes forward. church some of you amen will come to the building some of you can't come all the time um, but the, the issue is is when we don't come all the time we don't pay our tithes all the time amen don't let the devil rob you amen you know what the bible says that 10 percent is holy unto god you can be faithful with that uh, you give accordingly you allow god to bless your finances amen let's not give god our leftovers let's not give god uh, the the things that we don't want but let's give him the things he asks of us amen he's already given us so much uh, so you know what uh Right now, amen, uh, we had a new presidency today, amen, and uh, they, they anticipate the new uh, stimulus checks going out soon, and uh, then we're also in tax season, amen, coming into tax season, and then you get paid all the time, amen. So you know what, in all those things, amen, give glory to God, in all those things, amen, uh, the Bible says 10% is holy, amen, so you know what, when you get a stimulus, God gets a stimulus, amen. amen. When you get when you get a tax return, God gets a tax return. Amen. When you get paid, God gets paid. Amen. So be faithful, Amen. Allow God, Amen, to use your life, and you you'll be surprised, Amen, the things that you just get blessed with, and 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 how God just moves moves mountains for you. Remember, the Bible says that that uh, that you won't have room enough to receive it. It'll be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And it doesn't necessarily say finances, amen. God wants to use your finances to break the bondage, amen, mm -hmm. so you can step out in faith. But in all aspects of your life, you begin to see God move in areas that you haven't seen, amen. You'll see things that, that become manifest in your children and, 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 and so forth. And you know what? Uh, allow God, amen, to bless you this evening, amen. amen. Be faithful with your tithes and offering. We have Zelle, we have Pop Money, those two apps. Uh, link to the phone number on the screen. Amen. 909-496-4594. Amen. So you know what? You give openly. Amen. And uh, let's bow our hearts as Brother Jesse bless the gift of the giver. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks once again for the opportunity to be able to gather in your house, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, we give you the all thanks and praises for meeting our finances, our personal finances, Lord. But here we are giving back righteously what belongs to you, Father God, Lord willingly father god lord father god lord we ask you that you bless the gift of the giver father god lord father god lord that you bless your people's hands father god lord in jesus mighty name we pray amen and what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve
We are going to um, we're going to continue in the book of Acts, chapter three. So if you have your Bibles, Amen. This is church and Bible study. If you're not going to take your Bible anywhere else, Amen. These are the places that you do take it to, Amen. Church and Bible study. So you know what? Uh, turn there, if you will, Acts chapter three, and we're going to begin with verse one. Um, we're going to continue going through, Amen. And uh, and uh, la the last last Wednesday we read about the growth of the church is beginning to grow and and, and and how how people are beginning to be added to the church and and how God's moving amongst the the disciples. Um, but we're going to jump in and we're going to see how 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 Peter begins to take the leadership role and and, and begins to pray for people and. And, and how he speaks boldness about, about Jesus. Amen. So we're going to start, uh, amen, Acts chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Amen. amen. Bible says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, means they were both looking at him, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them. And let's stop right there. Here's a story of the lame man, a man that, that the Bible says that they would lay him at the gate, the gate called Beautiful, which is the, the, the entrance to the temple. Um, it's key and significant because the, the temple the, the area around it was where, because not everyone was allowed into the temple. And people who were supposed to be godly would be going entering into the temple. So the beggars would come and they would they would they would be out at, outside the temple. And and they would they would beg or 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 people like like this gentleman, he was he was he was lame, which meant he was crippled, he wasn't able to move, he wasn't able to walk. The Bible says that they would come and put him there. Who would put him there? Well, his family. They would put him there. They would place him there, his family, his friends would put him there daily because they would use his, his handicap, if you will, uh, and they would use that in his advantage to receive because he would sit there begging for alms and begging for money all day long. But they said that they would bring him out there daily, which meant this gentleman was well known. People knew who he was. It wasn't, it wasn't somebody they brought every once in a while. I remember as a young carver going to church in Ontario, we said, you know, people were, would beg for money. And not all of them were, were like this like this man who were handicapped, who could not get up, who couldn't, who couldn't walk. I remember we used to have a guy, we used to have two guys, one we called fan belt, the other one we called gas can. Because no matter where you saw them, they always had a fan belt and a gas can in their hand. They always either ran out of gas on the way home or their fan belt broke on the freeway. And it was the same story all the time. But when you get to see them, you get to know them. People who didn't know them would see it and be like, hey, there's evidence that they needed, they needed help. And they would get money all the time. As time grew, we, uh, began to, we, get, we, we find out that these particular people actually had a house that a group of them beggars would, would be at. And they actually had rent and furniture and everything else. They lived there. They lived there together. And they didn't work. They just panhandled, panhandled for money. This man wasn't like that. He was crippled. He was, he was placed there. So people knew who he was. They understood that this man was not able to get up and walk. They, they understood he wasn't able to just uh, begin to, 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 to go to work on his own. So they knew that they knew who this who this guy was. And the Bible says that that he looks to Peter and John 
And he asked them for, for money. He, he asked them for, the Bible says, alms. He asked them for money. But then Peter and John both looked at him in the eye. They both took time. They stopped and they looked at him. There are so many people out there who are asking for money and doing things, people who are hurting, that we've come to the point in our lives where we don't know what's real, what's not real when it comes to these things. Well, let's remove the, 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 the handicapped portion of it, the, 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 the inability to, to walk. And let's, let's go with what Jesus Christ died for, which was souls. So when we look at it as, as, as the lame man, and we look at him as a, as a soul, a person without Jesus, now let's look at him through the eyes of Peter and John. Peter and John looked at this man, this soul, without Jesus. He asked them a question, and he stopped, and he looked back at him, and he stared him dead in the eye. He looked at him. Through our daily life, we come across people all the time. And a lot of times, there's people who are looking for an answer, looking for, looking for something. And, and I say this all the time, they just don't know it yet. And they look at him, and instead of taking time to stop and looking him in the eye, what we do is we walk right past him. But the Bible says that, that this man was known, that this man was there, that he was there daily. And Peter and John, they stopped and they looked at him. Okay? Now let's pick it up. Let's go on. Uh, we'll pick it back up at four. And fixing his eyes on him, John, with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What does that mean he did? He prayed for. He spoke out to God on behalf of this, of this man. He prayed for him. In verse 7, And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Amen. So this young man, this, this gentleman who, who's, who's, who's outside the temple, Peter and John look at him. And, and what that guy thought he was going to receive from them, he received differently. Remember, we all have a look upon our face. People look at you and they and they anticipate something from you. I think as I'm getting older, my look is getting a little softer. As I was younger, my look was a lot more stern. And and people would, you know, it, which worked good for salesmen because when they would come up to me and, and want to sell something to me, I'll just I'll just give them a look. I'll just look at them and they'd be like, never mind, and walk away. <laughs> You go to the mall, and they have a little kiosk down the center of the mall. And those people are always trying to pull you and sell you. And I remember my kids were little, and they used to, I used to make them nervous of me and them walking through the mall because they would come to sell something to me, and I'd look at them and say, no, I don't want none of that. And they'd get all nervous and walk away, and i think it was funny, and i just keep walking. My kids would get nervous, and they're like, dad. They thought, they, thought was, they thought the guy thought it was going to hurt him. But you have a look. So, when they looked at Peter and John, when he looked at Peter and John, the look was, I can get some money off of them. That's, I, I, that's what I need them for. But when Peter and John looked at him, and he was asking for money, they seen something deeper than what he was asking for. They said, you know, this, 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 this guy right here, he thinks he needs money, but you know what? I, see, I, can see, I can see him. He needs something else. He needs salvation. It's a soul. They saw a soul. They didn't see a guy who was begging. They didn't see a guy who was asking for something that, that, that appeared to be what he needed. But they saw a soul and they began to minister. They began to talk to him. And they began to pray for him. And it's important, it's important because there's so many people that, come, that we come across in our lives that we allow a man or our, our, our appearance to take control of the situation rather than allowing God to take control of us. You see, because Jesus Christ, when he died, he didn't die 
Amen. So we can handle our alms, but he died for salvation. And that's what Peter and, and that's what Peter and John were giving. They were saying, you know what? We can't give you none of that other stuff, but you know what? What I do have, I am going to give. That's extremely important. Peter and John says, silver and gold, I have none. Um, but what I do have, I'm going to give to you. There's something that we possess. There's something that we have that is unique to the children of God. That's unique to the children of God. And what that is, is salvation. We have, we have salvation that we can give to people. Yeah. We have Jesus Christ that we can give to people. But the issue is, is that when people approach us, what are we giving in return? Are we giving them the, 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 the word of God? Are we giving them Jesus Christ in return? Or are we ignoring it, turning away? Do we turn around and say, well, you know what? Uh, God doesn't want, to, doesn't want to use me for that today. Right. See, it's easy if people come to church and they come to the altar to come and pray for them. You know, that, that's easy. What's not easy is standing alone in front of somebody and asking them, let, let me pray for you. But that's what God has called us to do. So let me continue. In chapter 3, and we'll go back to 7 again. And Peter, and it says, And he took him by the, hand, the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankles, bones, received strength. So did Peter, when he prayed for him, did he just let him be? No, he says, the Bible says he lifted him up. Which tells us, you know, when, 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 I, I, I learned this a long time ago, and I, and, and I take it very serious. When I pray for somebody, what I'm doing is I am connecting my heart to theirs when I pray for them. If I'm praying for salvation, praying for healing, what I'm doing is I'm leaving a piece of the Spirit of God in me, and I'm instilling it into them. I'm giving them a part of who I am. The Bible says that his that his that his ankles and his bones is that bones of his ankles begin to have strength. And Peter didn't say, "Okay, I prayed for you. Now go about your way. Leave me alone." No, the Bible says that Peter grabbed him by this hand and helped him up. When we pray for people, a part of who we are is linking up to them. It's becoming a part of who they are becoming. A part of the, 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 the thing is is that people when we pray for them, although you may pray for multiple people and forget the name of that person, most of the time those people won't forget you. Yes. So when Peter prayed for him and John prayed for him and he said, Silver and gold I have none, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk, he, and then he lifted him up. He says, You he by doing that, it's a civilization saying, I got you. You're going to make it. And that's what we need. That's what we need to do. When, when I, and, and Sunday, I, I preached a pretty hard sermon on, 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 on discipling. We need to be, you know, who are we discipling? Are we, who are we instilling the word of God into? When we pray for somebody and we don't help them up, we've left them in the same state in which we found them. See, when he asked, when, when Peter told him, I don't have nothing for you, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk, and, and, and he got strength. Until Peter helped him up and instilled faith into him, he would have remained on the floor. He wouldn't have got up. Because it was not It was by the faith that God, that, that God was using through Peter to, to lift him up. See, the man only knew that he couldn't walk. He didn't know that he could, but Peter knew that he could. That's why Peter was able to lift him up. Yes. And it was through that faith, that impartation. In verse 8, so he, he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. 
That's the, that, that's the sign of a new convert. Why, why do you think the first place he went to was inside the temple? To follow Peter? No. All this time, this man sat out in front of the temple and saw all these people going in. But his people would only put him at the, at the gate. They wouldn't allow him. They wouldn't take him inside. Or he wasn't allowed inside. The reason why he went into the temple first is because he is finally able to do something he's never been able to do before. It was a new chapter. It was a new beginning. It was something different. It was something that he was going to be able to accomplish. It was something that, 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 that prior to this day, it, he could not do it. He could not do it. Because those who cared about him only took him to the gate so they could receive. But it wasn't until, until God's, God touched this man through Peter that strength was given. And it wasn't until the faith that Peter imparted in him that his legs were able to get to come up that he was able to now walk into the temple. Anybody have any questions, any input? Anybody crippled? Do you want to walk? You can pray for me right now. Amen. Verse 9, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Who were these people that saw him? These were the same people that walked past him every single day. These are the same people that he would ask for alms. The same people. Then they knew that he that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. You see, when God touches a person... People are going to be amazed. People are going to be amazed. People are amazed when, when they find out that you're living for God. People are amazed when, when they come back to see you in a couple years and you're still serving God. People are amazed that, that your marriage is still together after so many years. People are amazed. Yeah. Amen. Because you could not have done that. Before we gave our lives to God, we were this lame man sitting in front of the temple. We didn't go in. We were taught that the temple was there, but nobody took us in. We didn't have enough strength, our legs, the, the, the man didn't have strength in his legs. We didn't have enough strength to go in. And it wasn't until somebody imparted faith into us to grab us by our hand to help us through that door, we never entered the temple. And that's why people were amazed. See, people are out there, and I've said this before, is you, all of you, may be the only Bible people will ever read. What is the Bible? It is a book full of stories about men and women of faith. Yes. Who place their lives in God's hands. You are that woman and you are that man. You are that Bible that some people will, will, will ever only read. Some of these people will never see any other Bible. They'll will, they will be brought to the temple. They'll be sitting outside the temple. They won't enter the temple. They'll be laid there at the temple for the benefit of someone else, but never receive the faith and the strength to make it into the temple. Yes, that's right. Until a man or a woman of God begins to impart upon them. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions, any input? Any else are in line? Amen. Okay, so now, now we're going to hear Peter. Because now Peter has to answer for all this. So let's, let's, let's hear what, Peter's got, what, got, what Peter got going on. Verse 11. Now, as the lame man who was healed <coughs> onto John, uh, Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's greatly, Solomon's greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people. So imagine Peter is in Solomon's court, and everybody who knew this man, who didn't have strength to ever get himself into the church, who never had enough faith to believe in God, that was imparted, that was finally imparted to him by by a man of God. 
They all see it and they were amazed. You know when churches grow? When ch churches grow, when new converts come. Mm -hmm. Old converts don't make churches grow. You know why? Because we're old. <laughs> That's it. We don't make churches grow. Old converts get comfortable and, 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 and sit. New converts are excited <laughs> over what God is doing in their lives. Old converts become comfortable and familiar with what God's already done. And it's not that the old converts don't appreciate God and don't love God and don't have the wisdom and don't talk to people about God. But the church growth on old converts is a lot slower than the church growth with new converts. New converts fill a church because they can't stop talking about Jesus. Right here, Peter and John are in Solomon's court. This man, remember, he goes into the temple and he's jumping and dancing. He's excited. So people are seeing the excitement of Jesus in his life now. And what are they saying? want some of that what is that that's different that's not who that, 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 this guy isn't the same guy that I that I walk by all the time the guy that I ignore is not the same guy so when there's new converts there's always church growth without new converts there's no church growth the way we're going to get our church to grow is by getting some new converts yes if you don't get a new convert the old converts ain't going to do it you know what we're going to do instead of bringing people we're going to go to Quirky's and go get something to eat. Amen. We're going to get some coffee and a donut or a pie or something. That's what we do. But new converts, they're telling people about Jesus. And I know that to be true because I have taken both old and new converts to Quirky's after church. Yep. Me and the old converts, we fellowship. And the new converts are handing out flyers to the waitresses and the waiters and to the bus people. And it happens. I've seen it. But that's where there's that's where the growth, that's where the amazement comes from. Okay? Amen. So let's let's go on. Anybody want to add to that? Let's go to uh, uh, verse 12. So when Peter saw it, this is after the, the, the crowd came. When people when Peter saw it, he responded to the people. Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intent, intently at us? As though, as, as, as though by our own power or God, godliness, we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus, <clears throat> whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are all witnesses. The line of, 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 of reasoning that, that Peter is bringing is, is he's bringing it in a manner of undeniability. He's saying, listen, it's not me, it was you. This is what was happening. This is what took place. This is what you chose to decide. But now, all of a sudden, you marvel? People were probably excited and Peter was, was careful. They were excited at this at this lame man walking. They probably hadn't seen a miracle. Or they're, they're, they're despised for Jesus was so strong that they didn't want to believe what was being said or what was being done. So when Peter and John did it, they were in amazement. That's why Peter says, why do you look at us in amazement? As if our own godliness is the one that made this guy walk. He's, he's, he's taking the point of, uh, off of them saying, don't, don't start looking at me like I'm God. Because God in the flesh came down and you crucified him. And uh, verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. 
whom you see and know. Now he's bringing it to a point of there's no denying it, you guys. You know this guy was crippled. It says, yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. He's from the, Peter was from the south. In the presence of y'all. <laughs> Verse 17. <laughs> Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did your rulers. Does the, ignor does the word ignorance mean dumb? No. <clears throat> the word ignorant just means unknowing. You just, you just didn't know. It's something. We're all ignorant to something. Growing up, I used to hear the word ignorant, and we, we used to use it in a, in a derogatory way, basically saying people were dumb. But as I got older, I felt dumb, using it in that way, because I found out the meaning of ignorant. And it doesn't mean that they were dumb, they just didn't know, or, cho or chose not to know. Okay? <clears throat> So he says in 17, yet now, brethren, I know that you did you did it in ignorance, as did your rulers. So then not only did you do common people, but the people you follow did it in not knowing. Verse 17, but those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Now Peter's telling them that about the prophets because he, he, what, if you notice you'll see Peter doing it when you read, you'll, when you read you'll see Paul doing it when you read you'll hear Jesus doing it and what they always do is they're always bringing back in the prophets they're bringing back for it is written for it is so it is for it is written which means they're 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 bringing in they're bringing to the forefront the word of God as the people who are there understand the word of God. So in other words, what they're doing is they're not making nothing up. They're saying this is what your belief system says and this is, this is what has happened. This is what is fulfilled. And he says in verse 19, he says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before. In other words, you're going to get a second chance. Mm -hmm. Whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed mm -hmm. from among the people. Says, if you're not, if you don't take heed to Jesus, it says you're going to be utterly destroyed. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty-four. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these things. Okay, so I, I say all the time, you're the only you're the only Bible that people will ever read. And that's that's true. I also tell you that you don't need to be a Bible scholar to witness to somebody that doesn't know about Jesus. You don't. You need to know what God did for you and how God's changed your life. And share that and watch lives get changed. But that's not in place of reading your Bible. We need to read our Bibles. We need to. We shouldn't only be reading the Bible when, we, when we're here at Bible study. That's, that's the only time you read your Bible, shame on you. It's not the only time you should be reading the Bible. You should be reading the Bible continuously. Read things, even if you read it three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, it doesn't matter. 
You, we need to be reading our Bible. If you have to read it a second time, it's probably because you didn't understand it the first time. But you'll probably get it around the fifth or sixth time, and that's okay. And the times that you don't get it, write it down. Bring it in. We'll take a look at it. We'll go over it together. But it's important to read your Bible. Not so that you can be a Bible scholar before you can talk to somebody, but so that you can stand in confidence and boldness to understand where you're serving God from. Mm -hmm. That's what Peter's doing. He's telling them, according to Moses and the prophets, according to Samuel, and all prophets since then, these are the words that have been spoken. He couldn't say that if he didn't know the word of God. Yeah. He couldn't have said that if he didn't take time to, re to read the letters. He understood it. Amen? Amen. So anybody have any questions that he put on that? Verse 25. You are sons of prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To the first, to you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you. In turning away every one of you from your iniquities. It is through Jesus that we're able to be turned away from our iniquities or our sins. It is, it is only in Jesus. It is not through the blood of Moses, it's not through the blood of Samuel, it's not through the blood of Isaac, it's not through the blood of Elijah. It's through the blood of Jesus that we're able to turn from our sins. It's through the blood of Jesus that we are sanctified. Through the blood of Jesus that our iniquities have been washed away. So it's important. We need to, we need to read our Bibles, but you also need to be a living Bible. You also need to be the person who's walking, standing in faith. When you pray for somebody, you need to pray for somebody. If you are not praying for somebody, you need to start. But when you pray for somebody. It is their hand that you need to grab and help them up. Not get them into the church building one time, but get them through their, through, through their life and salvation. When you pray with somebody, the spirit of God in you has been, now been imparted into someone else. And it is in that impartation that you will be for eternally, you will eternally be connected to that person. I tell you, in testimony that I have been told years later by people that I am not, they are now pastors, or they are now, they've been serving God for so many years, or their marriage was restored because of the impartation that, that I gave into their life. And these are people that I just did what I do because it's who I am and didn't even remember. It wasn't until I came across them that they reminded me, say, hey, you prayed with me. You told me it was going to be okay, and you were right, and I'm still serving God. Yeah. It is a part of who you are, being instilled and imparted in someone else, that there's going to be life. Remember. But um, It's just, um, Mona just says, um, tell unbelievers what God did for you. Remember? Tell unbelievers what God has did for you. Make them believers. How are you going to make them believers? You know that that we use the word believer a lot. Okay, so we'll use it in this in, in this context. The believer, we believe in Jesus. The unbeliever, the ones who don't. A lot of people do, but they just don't follow him, so that's what it talks about. But how will they believe if we don't tell them? How will they know what's true if we don't share it? Yes. People say like preachers, all we want is money. Good luck with that. It's not that's not, it's not the case here. But you know what we want? We want blessing upon your life. And I know that in my giving, I've been blessed. And I just want everyone else to have what I have. Be blessed the way I've been blessed. I want people, I want people's children to be raised in a good way in regards of, and accept all odds. You know, I, I, I share, you know, my kids aren't, 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 you know, they still need Jesus. But the way I was, they should they should have been troublemakers. But they're college graduates. It's because it, that is the press down, shaken together, and bring over. Yeah. That's what that is. 
My mom, my dad got saved on her deathbed. That is the press down, shaking together, and laying over. That is the not have room enough to receive it. That's what that is. That's why we step by their faith. And to impart who that is into someone else is the greatest blessing you'll ever, you'll ever be able to be a part of. Impart. We need new converts. Because all of us old converts just ain't cutting it. We're not doing our jobs. Church revival comes when new converts are alive. Yeah, new converts are alive when the old converts are imparting. And if we're not imparting, lives are not being changed. And that's what happened with this lame man as he sat in front of the gate at the temple. So I challenge you to invite someone to church Sunday. But if you're going to invite somebody to church, then you need to be here too. Get them to the building. Get them to the church. Invite them. Pick them up. Wear a mask if you have to. If the one around your, your, your mouth and your nose doesn't work, the Halloween store is probably open. We'll get you one to cover the whole face. <laughs> Either way, get a mask on. Get them over here. That's okay. Because God wants to do something. Amen. Any other questions? Any other input? Before we close? So if not, I hope this out to you. So I challenge you, read chapter 4 before next Wednesday. I also read chapter 3 of, of uh, Corinthians. Chapter 3 or 4? I think it's 3. Of uh, 1 Corinthians. And uh, get ahead of us. And uh, write down questions. Write down uh, any any comments you have. And we'll get going. Amen. Go ahead. We have another comment. Tell the truth. Be honest. I hope that my testimony help someone. I'm not ashamed of the past. Uh, the past was a road that I chose, but God forgave me. Amen. Who's that? Mona. Sister Mona. Amen. Thank you, sister. Be proud. You know what? I hear so many people who are ashamed of their past. I'm not ashamed of my past. I'm proud of my past. I'm proud enough to know that it's because of my past that God forgave me. Yes, amen. So whatever it is that you've been through, whatever it is that, 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 that you partook in, in life, hey, it was your life. Accept it. Because that's what God's going to build from. Yes. Share that. Hey, you know what? I was like this. You were like that. I tell people, we run into people, my wife and I, and we'll tell them, you know, they'll be, you know, strung out on drugs and thugs and guns and everything else. And I'll tell them, you know, I, I used to sell, I used to have guns and steal cars and sell drugs. And I, I swear my wife says she used to be a drug addict. And they look at her like, quit it. And, uh, she was cracked out. She talked to signs and bushes all the time. No, she do all that. <laughs> She'd be like, ah! No, she only does that to me. But <laughs> people don't believe it. They'll be like, no, no. Okay. Then I'll be like, no, send you away. For reals. <laughs> okay, I believe you now. Our past is glory to God. Our past is glory to God. That's right. Thank you, Jesus, that you were able to remove me from the pit that I was in. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. But what good was him removing it from us, removing us from that pit? We're not sharing in the glory. Our well, past is understanding others that are lost. Our past is understanding others that are lost. How, how, how are we not going to understand? Peter, when he saw when he saw this lame man sitting in front of the gate, he knew what that felt like. Because he didn't always have Jesus. He, he knew what that felt like. He was just a common man. You want to see revival? We need new converts. Yes. But new converts are going to come unless those old converts take control. Yes, amen. And begin to share. Amen. So we're going to we're going to end right there. And uh, remember, get ahead. I want to remind you guys: uh, pray, pray for the church. Yes, amen. Uh, we did come across a couple buildings, um, 
and and we have two buildings. One is more ready to move in than the other. Don't know what which way God is going to move. All I know is that whatever way God moves, He moves, and whatever God has for us is the direction we're going to go. So pray. Both of them are freestanding buildings; they're their own properties. So pray that God just opened doors. Uh, when we got this building, um, against all odds, God opened doors. Yes. And uh, it, it, he made a way for us to come in. And I believe in the same miracle, and God's still going to do the same thing. So we do have a couple buildings. Uh, if you're interested, amen, um, I can show you where they're at. But uh, just pray. So just say, God, direct the church, direct the pastor, direct, you know, God, open the doors of the ones that you would have us to be. Um, we have some things that are, that are going on behind the scenes that we're trying to get accomplished, my wife and I, to, to get the church moving and going in the right direction and just keep moving forward with the things of God. So just keep us in prayer, um, but pray. We need to pray. Amen. Amen. So you know what? Uh, don't forget, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, invite someone and come yourself. Amen. So let's bow our hearts as we close the prayer. My Father, we thank you, God, this evening, God, for bringing us together. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for the message, God. We just pray, God, that you just teach us uh, to be bold and, and to be able to testify and to be that Bible you have called us to be, that the word of God will be seen through us and through the changes of our lives. God, we thank you, God. Uh, fill this place with new converts that there may be revival. We thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.